Onk Live Insights is a video editorial program produced by Onk Live. There are other uh, situations that require additional therapies for ITP. One of these is platelet transfusion. Platelet transfusion is usually not used often in ITP, generally reserved for acute life-threatening bleeding. Um, the reason being is that anytime you give platelet transfusion, you risk causing alloimmunization of the patient, in which case they might be particularly refractory to uh, additional platelet transfusion. It's often debated whether platelet transfusions do any good in ITP. I think they actually do in most patients. There's an old study, I think it's from 1986, by Carr, uh, that actually looked in an uncontrolled manner at platelet transfusion in ITP patients. And it showed that uh, about 40% of patients, I recall, uh, got at least 20,000 to 30,000 platelet count increments um, within four to eight hours after transfusion. In most patients, those increments had dropped down significantly by 24 hours. But in an acute life-threatening situation uh, or one that's incipient, then that 20 to 1,000 increment can make a big difference. In regard to whether eradication of H. pylori allows remission of ITP. H. pylori infection can lead to immune thrombocytopenia by a molecular mimicry mechanism. So there are amino acids on H, uh, the H. pylori that will stimulate autoreactive antibodies to the glycoprotein 2B receptor of platelets. And so in that manner, uh, these antibodies cross-react with platelets and lead to immune thrombocytopenia. In the United States population, the eradication of H. pylori doesn't necessarily alter the course of immune thrombocytopenia once it develops, unfortunately. If you look at the literature from Asia, and I believe mostly Japan, there's better data to show that when you treat the H. pylori, the autoimmune thrombocytopenia goes away, but that has not been shown in the U.S. population. So I think that it is something important to look for when you have a patient diagnosed with ITP, and certainly as we have patients with ITP and we follow them, it's good to be attuned to are they developing symptoms of gastritis and have them you know, diagnosed with H. pylori and definitely treat that, but I wouldn't necessarily expect that once you do that, that their ITP will remit. The use of chemotherapy uh, for uh, ITP is, is certainly not as frequent as it once was, and that's because we now have the thrombopoietin receptor agonists. So chemotherapy um, actually does have efficacy. Uh, I probably, uh, there's been a few things that have been used more than others. There's very few that have been studied in any randomized manner, so the level of evidence for many of these is not particularly strong. But interestingly, there's many of us who have their individual things that they truly believe in, and that's certainly based on, you know, quite a bit of personal experience. I'd say probably Imuran is probably the most commonly used uh, sort of long-term chemotherapy, if you will. It's given orally um, and will induce uh, improvements in some refractory ITP patients. Um, cyclophosphamide, there's uh, some individuals who have used this with significant success, uh, particularly uh, intravenously given on a, on a monthly basis at, at higher doses. Um, I haven't used a lot of cyclophosphamide myself. Vincristine has been a popular uh, drug in ITP, and I've had some tremendous results with vincristine, actually. I, I think uh, I've had some people with very refractory disease who have uh, had dramatic responses to vincristine that have been sustained. Now, I'm not going to say those are common. Those are certainly the minority. But I think with all of these agents, each of us has seen really dramatic responses to, uh, 
to, uh, to some of these agents and, uh, um, and use them from time to time. Sometimes uh, things like CVP or combination chemotherapy might be used a little bit more in patients with ITP who may have an underlying lymphoid neoplasm. Uh, Low-grade lymphoid neoplasms are also associated with ITP uh, and, uh, and may respond to some of these uh, other treatments. I've recently had a patient with a, uh, a low-grade lymphoid disease that was not responding to anything and uh, treated them with, uh, with vincristine. Actually, just after a few weeks, their platelet count almost normalized and has remained uh, quite stable. So it's something to, something to try, but we each have our little favorites. 